11 Creepy and Disturbing Monsters of the Scooby-Doo Cartoon Backstories Explained The one thing that unites all the generations from Gen X to Gen Z is their shared love of Scooby-Doo. You might not know the lyrics of the song trending on the charts right now, but you would definitely recognize the tune of Scooby-Doo even from a mile away. As kids, we owed a lot of our good night's sleep to these meddling kids for debunking myths and ghosts. At the end of every episode, our favorite, the Mystery Inc., would unmask the person pretending to be a ghost. Fred, Daphne, Velma, Shaggy, and Scooby-Doo have been the friends we need for almost half a century. The reason why this cartoon remains iconic is that it gave us characters we can relate to. Velma and Shaggy assured us that it is okay to be different. Velma has been a role model to the kids who felt maybe too geeky, unable to fit in. It is her intellect alongside Shaggy and Scooby's impeccable timing that always saved the day. Shaggy's ever-hungry hipster persona is a contrast to that of Fred and Daphne's. Fred and Daphne are portrayed as mature and responsible enough to be adults. Like the popular saying that goes, great art is inspired in times of crisis, Scooby-Doo was created during the Vietnam War when political tensions were at an all-time high. Now, let us look into 11 of the disturbing monsters who would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for the busybody kids. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Hear my cry. Bring back one who cannot die. Ben Ravencroft. The gang meets Ben Ravencroft while solving a case with him at the museum. Velma was a big fan of the books he wrote. At the same time, Ravencroft admired Velma's well-known intellect. I am a huge fan of your work. I have read all your books, which, in my opinion, are the best He activated his warlock powers after tricking the Mystery Inc. into finding Sarah's grimoire. He was powerful enough to set fire and spell life into inanimate objects. In strength, he was far inferior to his ancestors. At the end, we feel that he deserved to get trapped inside her spellbook for all of eternity. The horror writer from Oakhaven dreamt of world domination. In order to achieve his goal, he orchestrated an elaborate ruse to deceive Velma and the gang. Unfortunately, he was not the only villain in town that had something hidden up his sleeve. The mayor and the other townspeople had spread rumors about the vengeful ghost of Sarah Ravencroft. We disturb the spirit of Ben's ancestor who was persecuted as a witch. They went around haunting people to increase tourist footfall in Oakhaven. It is villains like Ravencroft who gave a bad name to adults over the age of 30. In the episode of Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost, Ravencroft invites the gang to his hometown, Oakhaven. He meets the gang to assist them to solve a mystery at the museum. Upon arriving at Oakhaven, Ben gets upset seeing the reputation of his ancestors getting tarnished. The Hex Girls perform songs about Sarah Ravencroft in their concert. Sarah was killed, accused of witchcraft in the 16th century. Ben claims that the rumors about her being a witch were baseless. He tells the gang that she was a Wiccan healer who helped patients with her herbs. She was misunderstood and falsely accused because of her eccentric nature. Ravencroft says that Sarah had a book with the details of her patients, which will prove her innocence. The mayor apologizes to Ravencroft. Ben, I feel real bad about everything, and I wanted to apologize for using your ancestor in our little publicity stunt. He confesses about finding Sarah's headstone, but her body and book were nowhere to be found. Velma soon figures out the location of the book. Ravencroft reveals his true nature and intentions once the book is found. It is revealed that the book is Sarah's grimoire. She was an evil witch who was trapped inside her book by the Wiccans. Imprison Sarah in her own spell book, and you helped me. Ben releases Sarah after unlocking his warlock powers, but is very disappointed to find that Sarah doesn't plan on world domination with him by her side. She intends to destroy it. Ben tries to send her back inside the book, but only a Wiccan has the ability to do so. Thorn, a member of the Hex Girls, is a Wiccan descendant who reads the spell in the book that would send her back. Sarah drags Ben along with her inside the book in the process. In the end, the book is burnt and destroyed while peace is restored in Oakhaven. 
thanks to the Mystery Inc. and the Hex Girls. So, they think they have escaped me! <laughs> ghost Clown The Ghost Clown was one of the most cunning villains of all time that the gang goes up against. He endangered the lives of four of the members and hypnotized three of them. The Ghost Clown turned out to be the disguise of Harry the Hypnotist. He wanted to take revenge on Mr. Barnstorm's circus for sending him to jail. Harry used to be a member of the circus, but he was fired after he was caught stealing. He's Harry the Hypnotist. He had an act with us, but we caught him stealing and sent him to prison. He hypnotized Scooby to walk the tightropes and Daphne to wear a ballerina costume and ride a unicycle. He also hypnotized Shaggy to tame the lions. He had tricked the gang into thinking there are two ghost clowns haunting the circus. He created a replica of him using balloons. His evil laughter was far more bone-chilling than his cheeky one-liners. All that goes up must come down. <laughs> he tried his best to stay one step ahead of the gang, but it was Shaggy's plan that revealed his identity and led to his capture. The gang had gone to investigate the circus after learning about the strange events happening there. While driving through the woods, the gang ran into two performers leaving the circus. The manager, Mr. Barnstorm, suspected that a ghost clown was haunting the circus. This circus is haunted by a, a ghost clown. A ghost? The gang leaves, but they forget Scooby at the circus, and the ghost clown successfully hypnotizes Scooby with his gold coin. The gang returns for Scooby, only to find him walking the tightrope. Shaggy and Velma rush to his rescue, while Freddy and Daphne search for the culprit inside the costume tent. The clown locks Freddy inside a trunk and hypnotizes Daphne. She, however, breaks out of the trance after an elephant squirts water on her. What I'm doing in this silly costume? And all wet? You were in a trance! The gang devises a plan to capture the ghost clown inside a cage, but their plan backfires. Freddy's cry of frustration triggers Shaggy's memory of being hypnotized and helps him devise a new plan. The ghost clown tries to hypnotize Shaggy and Scooby. Watch the pretty coin of gold, and you will do as you are told. You are Shaggy and Scooby hold out a mirror, and he gets tricked into hypnotizing himself and to act like a chimpanzee. Mr. Barnstorm recognizes the culprit as Harry the Hypnotist. This is, however, not the last that we see of him. He made cameos throughout the series. The clues. Uh, why not start here in the clues closet? <laughs> Phantom Puppeteer The Phantom Puppeteer was a master of puppets. He was capable of creating any shadow using his puppets. He used the puppet show as a front for counterfeiting money. He used his puppets to scare away people from the Strand Theater. He tried to harm Shaggy, Scooby, and Velma by throwing flats and sandbags at them. Fortunately, the gang escapes without a scratch. His racket was busted by the Mystery Inc. Pietro, the master puppeteer, was greedy enough to not have a conscience against hurting teenagers and a talking dog, just to keep printing his money. It was his over-enthusiasm in using the puppets that led to his downfall, and helped the gang solve the case even faster. As a puppeteer, he was skilled enough to make himself look like the Phantom. Come on, wake up! It, it, he's a puppet too! <gasps> While returning from a pizza place, Shaggy and Scooby witness a violin case full of money flying out of a van after it hits a speed bump. Suspicious about the bundle of money, Shaggy informs the gang about the incident while Scooby guards the money. Pietro then uses his puppeteer skills to distract Scooby with an illusion of a poodle flirting with him as he escaped with his counterfeit money. Scooby describes the bizarre incident to the gang. To see her. And while you were gone, someone took the case! The clues lead the gang to investigate the Strand Theater, where Pietro poses as the ticket man to avoid suspicion. He then makes use of his puppeteering skills yet again to scare away the meddling kids, but it only leads them closer to the truth. He attempts to inflict harm, attacking them with theater props, but fails. The gang finally captures and unmasks the phantom puppeteer as Pietro. The Mystery Inc. saves the day by sending the counterfeiter behind bars. The Skull Island Vampire The Skull Island Vampire was rumored to be Lisa's grandfather. Her uncle, Leon, told the gang that Lisa's grandfather was a vampire who wanted to turn Lisa. Here is another picture of him. Zoinks! You mean Gramp was a vamp? His evil, maniacal laughter after every successful task sent shivers down one spine. 
The gang begins to refer to him as Gramp the Vamp. The real culprit managed to hypnotize Lisa into thinking she is a vampire. He bought bats from an exotic shop to make his theory look more convincing. The culprit planned to institutionalize Lisa for mental illness and inherit her hotel. He tried to scare Daphne by appearing in front of her, by traveling through a vent, donned in a beard without a mustache, yellow lenses, fangs, and pointed ears. Wearing a magenta cape over a gray tux, he disguised himself as Gramp the Vamp. He tried to scare the gang often by screaming for blood out of the blue and used a special whistle to control the bats. Leon, as a villain, was vengeful and cruel. If it wasn't for the meddling kids, he probably would have succeeded in his plans. Oh no! Look out! In the episode of Vampire Bats and Scaredy Cats, the gang visits Lisa to celebrate her birthday. They arrive at an old hotel that Lisa was going to inherit on her 18th birthday. Velma talks about the presence of vampires on the island and dismisses the rumors as illogical. It's been said that there are vampires on the island, but that's ridiculous. Vampires? On arriving at the island, Shaggy and Scooby were asked to deliver a box to Mr. Drackel. The box turned out to be a coffin that he needed for the Undertaker's convention. A bat flying out of the coffin adds to the eerie setting of the island. While sleeping, Daphne suddenly wakes up to a vampire standing beside her. Her screams scare him away as he vanishes using the ventilation duct. Leon circulates the rumor that deems Lisa's grandfather a vampire. He then pretends to be Gramp the Vamp and chases the gang around the hotel. He uses a high-pitched bell to hypnotize Lisa into thinking she is a vampire. Velma, Fred, and Daphne find a piece of paper with XO6 Desmo written on it, which leads them to reveal the real identity of Gramp the Vamp. They snap Lisa out of her hypnotic trance and come up with a plan to trap Gramp the Vamp. Leon is unmasked and his true motives are revealed. Lisa rewards the gang with an ample amount of hamburgers, all of which are gobbled up by Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Werecats and Zombies – Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island Unlike most of the monsters in the series, the Werecats and Zombies on Moonscar Island were not humans hiding behind masks. They were monsters with supernatural powers. When their island was attacked by Morgan Moonscar, Simone and Lena turned to their cat god for help. They were transformed into powerful werecats who would seek revenge from Moonscar and his pirates. But on every moon harvest, they would have to drain the lives of innocent humans to stay immortal. The drained humans would then turn into zombies on the Moonscar island who were wronged by the werecats. Soon, Jacques joined the werecats. Lena would lure in unsuspecting tourists to the island, and the three of them would drain them to preserve their immortality. After luring the gang into the island, they made voodoo dolls to hurt them. If it weren't for the zombies, the gang wouldn't have survived on the island. In Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island, the gang splits to play their individual roles. Daphne is a TV show host, and Velma is a bookstore owner. Shaggy and Scooby are working as guards in the airport, but they get fired for eating all the contraband. Freddy plans a surprise for Daphne's birthday and secretly reunites the gang. The Mystery Inc. is back together, and they plan to start a new show. After eavesdropping on the gang's conversation, Lena invites them to investigate her island. Daphne researches all the mysterious disappearances on the Moonscar Island and decides to investigate. Warm us up. On arriving, a writing on the wall appears to be a warning to the gang to go back, and such warnings keep appearing. Meanwhile, a Civil War ghost appears while Shaggy is getting ready for dinner. Shaggy and Scooby keep goofing around, but they run into more zombies. The gang sets out to investigate and tries to unmask a zombie, but his head comes off. The gang starts to believe that zombies on this island are real. Lena leads them into a cave with their voodoo dolls, where they pin the gang against the wall. The trio reveal themselves in their true form and narrates the story of how Morgan Moonscar killed the islanders. They try to drain the gang, but the zombies come to their rescue. Velma creates voodoo dolls of the werecats and uses the dolls against them. The werecats fail to drain the gang before sunrise and perish. All the zombies are now avenged and they ascend into the light. Mystery Inc. has one of their most frightening adventures on this zombie island. Sir. The Tar Monster The Tar Monster resembles a huge green-eyed cyclops covered in tar. 
He chased after the intruders in the cave and would growl and roar to scare them away. The tar monster wore a diving suit underneath, which enabled him to swim through tar. He would construct or suffocate his victims by enveloping them in tar. He wanted to keep the treasure of the lost city all to himself. The people behind the tar monster's mask came up with a plan for scaring away others from the cave and disrupting Dr. Brixton's research. He would slowly steal the treasures from the lost city while pretending to be a monster. Dr. Brixton believed that the monster guarding the treasures of the ancient city had kidnapped his assistant, Stoner. Mr. Ink manages to trap the tar monster and unmask him to be Stoner. Stoner, where have you taken the treasures? Ah, I'll never tell. Scooby-Doo and the gang visit Dr. Brixton in Turkey. He had just discovered a thousand-year-old buried city. Dr. Brixton called for the services of the gang as the tar monster was scaring away all of his workers, causing a delay. The professor was worried about his assistant, Stoner, who was abducted. I heard my assistant, Mr. Stoner, shouting for help. I ran over here to help and found this, his tent. The gang follows the monster tracks, which lead them to a nearby tar pool. They become suspicious after finding a piece of ancient pottery. The next morning, they explore the ancient city with Dr. Brixton. Their suspicions increase after finding out that the ancient treasure had been stolen. Professor, the treasures have been stolen. Look, there's a tar monster. The gang comes across another piece of ancient pottery near a new tar pool. Shaggy and Scooby end up getting chased by the monster. Fred, Daphne, and Velma find a map of the underground city and come up with a plan. They trap the tar monster and reveal it was Stoner, and he gets arrested. The gang recovers the missing treasure and saves the day. Ghostly Gondolier The ghostly gondolier was rumored to be the ghost of a traitor who cursed the family of Dodge Malvolio. My spirit will roam and curse this city forever! The ghostly gondolier had the appearance of a humanoid ghost creature. He had green sclera and black pupils which made him look sinister. He wrapped himself in an indigo tunic with a gray cloak, hiding his face behind a mask which made his face look green. The ghostly gondolier was revealed to be Mario, a distant descendant of Malvolio. He wanted to collect all the medallions which would lead him to Malvolio's missing treasure. He kidnapped Daphne as soon as she wore one of the medallions. He also ransacked Antonio's office and locked him up. Mario hid his family lineage from Antonio and deceived him only to get close to the treasure. His plans are foiled when Scooby-Doo figures out his location. He is trapped and unmasked by the gang. Mario's identity as the ghostly gondolier is revealed. A hooded figure steals a triangular medallion from the Venice Opera House and escapes in his gondola. Antonio invites the gang to Venice. They tour Venice in gondolas and visit Antonio's restaurant. Shaggy and Scooby mistake a hooded gondolier for a ghost. They are reassured on learning it's a fog that plays tricks on them. Ghost? You're joking! Sometimes the fog plays strange tricks, my dear. They catch up with Antonio, who is continuing with his art studies in the academy. Velma inquires about his ancestor, Dodge Malvolio IV. Antonio tells the gang that his portrait and treasures were never recovered. The only legacy Antonio was left with was four golden medallions. He was in possession of one of them while two others were in a museum. The fourth one was recently stolen from the Venice Opera House. Mario rushes in to inform Antonio that another medallion too was stolen. Antonio and the gang rush to the museum. He gives them a tour of the museum and shows them the portraits of his ancestors. Velma notices how all of them have green eyes. Are my ancestors? I can tell. They all have green eyes like you. They arrive to check on the medallions. As soon as Daphne wears one of the medallions, she gets captured by a hooded figure and the rest of the gang splits to search for Daphne. Antonio's office gets ransacked and the hooded figure escapes with both Antonio and Daphne. When the ghostly gondolier chases after the gang once again, Scooby-Doo finds a clue about his location. Velma figures out the treasure's location next from an observation she made in one of the paintings. The gang rushes to rescue Daphne and Antonio. They capture the ghostly gondolier and find out it was Mario. He used contact lenses to hide his green eyes. The culprit is arrested, and the group enjoys the rest of their stay in Venice. <laughs> space Cook The spooky Space Cook was a humanoid ghost in a spacesuit with a skull for his head. 
He was terrorizing the local airfield, leaving glowing footprints which spooked the locals further. His helmet would glow when he laughed his sardonic laugh. That's scrap. We find out at the end that the glowing footprints were created by dipping his boots and gloves in phosphorus. Due to this menace, a local farmer was getting harassed by reporters who each wanted the latest scoop of the alien ghost haunting the local airfield. Later, the real identity of the spooky space cook was revealed to be Henry Bascom. He was haunting the local fields in hopes of buying the land at a reduced price. Aha! So that's it! He wanted to scare us off so he could pick up the land cheap! He tried to scare Shaggy and Scooby amidst the chaos, but they found his projector. He chased Shaggy and Scooby into the wind tower where his costume gets blown off and his identity is revealed. At the beginning of the spooky space kook episode, a mysterious spaceship lands on the airfield. A glowing ghost in a spacesuit appears and he walks off, cackling. The gang runs out of gas while driving through the old country road. They arrive at the doorstep of a farmer, who misidentifies them as reporters. Get off of my property! I'm sick of you reporters pestering me night and day! The gang informs him about their situation, and the farmer confesses that reporters have been bothersome lately, because of an alien spaceship and a ghost haunting the airfield. After refilling the mystery machine, the gang decides to investigate the mystery at hand. They follow an aircraft to the abandoned airfield. While Fred and the girls search for clues, Fred gets caught by a hook and starts to dangle mid-air. He is rescued just before the alien ghost arrives. Shaggy and Scooby head to the mess hall, where they are tempted by the fresh food, but the ghost arrives and starts to chase them. The gang comes across a jeep that runs by itself, and an army of space alien ghosts begin to materialize. Shaggy and Scooby run into the wind tower, where they find a projector and a tape recorder. The ghost enters the wind tower while chasing after them. The wind blows away his costume, and it puts a stop to the shenanigans of Henry Bascom. Later, Freddy uses the tape recorder to prank Shaggy and Scooby by playing the evil laughter. The Phantom Shadows The Phantom Shadows, also known as the Green Ghosts, reappeared throughout the series. They were also featured in the Scooby-Doo and Supernatural crossover. Cosgood Creeps and Cuthbard Crawls were the lawyers of Colonel Beauregard, a millionaire. The lawyers donned hooded capes and freaky gloves to scare away the heirs of Colonel Beauregard. They couldn't take over the ownership of his estate without getting rid of his relatives and Scooby-Doo. The family turned up at the reading of his will, where a condition is laid securing their inheritance. They needed to spend one night at his haunted castle. Creeps and Crawls soon begin to scare off the relatives by pretending to be the Phantom Shadows. They kidnapped the relatives one by one, but nothing went according to plan when they went after Scooby-Doo. <laughs> they were captured and unmasked. At the end, they realized that they went through all the trouble for worthless Confederate money. In the episode, A Night of Fright is No Delight, the gang head to a spooky mansion on an island. Colonel Beauregard Sanders chose Scooby-Doo as one of his heirs because Scooby had saved him from drowning years ago. ...have rescued old Beauregard from a fish pond several years before, and was remembered... Cosgood Creeps, one of the Colonel's lawyers, greets the gang on arrival. They proceeded to meet with the other heirs, Colonel's relatives. Creeps plays a record of an old phonograph. The recording of the Colonel tells his heirs that the mansion was haunted, and each of them must spend the entire night to inherit their fortune. The gang decides to spend the night with Scooby. A ghost appears while Scooby is taking a bath. His bathtub slides through a secret passage and down a chute with Scooby in it. Scooby rushes to tell Shaggy and Fred about the incident, but they find the bathtub intact and dismiss Scooby's claim. Meanwhile, the green ghost scares one of the colonel's cousins. The gang finds the cousin to have simply disappeared into thin air. A menacing message on a dusty mirror tells the gang to leave the island. The note was signed by Phantom Shadow. The gang devises a plan to capture the ghost, following the footprints left behind by the Phantom Shadow. They soon realize that Scooby is the only heir left in the mansion. On seeing a smudge of green paint on Shaggy's hand, Fred comes up with a plan. His plan fails, but Scooby manages to capture the phantom ghosts. They are unmasked, and Creeps and Crawl's devious plan to inherit the Colonel's fortune fails. In the end, a floating bone materializes comically and makes Scooby quite giddy. Ghost of Dr. Coffin the ghost of Dr. Coffin was rumored to haunt the sanitarium near the Canadian border. 
He had pale skin, pointy ears, and green sclera. His baleful, psychotic laughter would often scare the Mystery Inc. The gang decides to investigate his case, after finding out that Dr. Coffin's patients keep disappearing mysteriously. The gang gets suspicious after seeing the paramedics going in and out with ambulances without patients. The gang follows the clues as they get chased by the ghost of Dr. Coffin. They find a room full of wigs. Eventually, they uncover a gold smuggling ring operating from the sanitarium. The ghost of Dr. Coffin is revealed to be Officer Oldfield, the mastermind behind the gold smuggling ring. No criminal can get away with tricking these meddling kids. Scooby and the gang get lost on a rainy night while returning from Niagara Falls. They meet Officer Oldfield, a Canadian patrol officer who tells them to avoid driving past the sanitarium, as it was haunted by the ghost of Dr. Coffin. The gang ends up driving to the sanitarium, thanks to a broken sign. They witness the paramedics carrying a patient inside. Two dogs follow them, but return quietly. Velma finds it suspicious to see the paramedics work during bad weather, at odd hours. They're bringing in a new patient. In this weather? And this time of night? Dr. Tewksbury invites the gang to the sanitarium for dinner. He claims that dogs can be trained and tamed by using different kinds of music as explanation for the dog's earlier behavior. He tells the gang that he used to be Dr. Coffin's assistant, and now his patients kept disappearing. The gang decides to stay overnight at the sanitarium. We see Dr. Coffin's laughing maniacally on top of a cliff before disappearing altogether. A musical tune seems to put Scooby in a trance. Scooby! Like, wake up! Wake up, Scoob, and run for it! The gang wakes up and heads to the organ room to wake Scooby, but get chased by the guard dogs. They end up in a room full of wigs, which gives them a clue. to see a doctor. They discover that the patients in the ambulances are gold bars covered in wigs. Shaggy and Scooby get driven to a gold mine. The gang uncovers the smuggling operation and unmasks the ghost of Dr. Coffin as Officer Oldfield. The Mystery Inc. solves another case and celebrates with a dance. Hmm? <laughs> Minor 49er the Minor 49er was rumored to have arrived at the Gold City in 1849. His soul wouldn't rest until he finds the last vein of gold. At night, one could hear the mines calling for the miner. He was an old white man with a gray beard and mustache. The top of his head was always covered with a hat, leaving only his nose discernible. He would often grunt and moan to scare off people. His face was usually devoid of any expression, but he was genuinely scared when he thought he was standing in the path of an oncoming train. In shock, he lifted his hat and revealed his eyes, giving away his identity as Hank. He wasn't violent by nature, but had tricked an entire town into thinking it's haunted, so as to control real estate prices. He had discovered an oil mine and wanted to keep this a secret, dominating the area. In the episode Mind Your Own Business, the gang ends up in an Old West ghost town and check into a ranch. The owner, Big Ben, seems over the moon, as he hasn't had a guest in many seasons. Hank explains the terror of Minor 49er, which had driven out locals. I don't know, but lately he's been coming up here and scared. The town had been abandoned for a long time now. The gang sets out to explore the haunted town. Shaggy and Scooby are spooked by even the minuscule details. Scooby panics on seeing the reflection of the Minor 49er and knocks over an Indian cigar store. It dislodges a map of Gold City with a safe combination scribbled in a corner. The gang finds a secret elevator in the hotel, which leads them to the mine. Wow, look where we've landed. A mine tunnel. It must be the old Gold City. Inside, they find a recorder playing the sounds of moaning and grunting with crude oil nearby. Scooby tricks Minor 49er into thinking he's about to be run over by an oncoming train. His boots fall off, revealing stilts, and he is unmasked to reveal Hank, ending up in jail. Scooby fools around with the stilts, trying to pick up apples. As usual, the episode ends with Scooby saying his iconic catchphrase, Scooby Dooby Doo. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.